Hey guys. Yesterday, I got these guys. This is, I think officially the names are Pinhead Larry and Dirty Dan. Oh gosh, you're not gonna be able to see them very well in here. I got these little aliens. They look like aliens. Before I show them to you, I also wanna say, hey, I've been getting so many questions about them and if they are for um, like pest control on my plants and stuff and they're not, they're actually going to be pets. I will be keeping them as pets. So yeah, I'm not letting them free roam around my house. I have things like diatomaceous earth on my plants and um, a cat that would probably try to eat them, a dog that would probably try to eat them. So they're not going to be free roaming. They do live in a 5.5 gallon tank. And I will say they each have molted once since I got them. So the night I got them, they each molted. It was kind of freaky. I looked in their little container cause they weren't in the tank yet. And there were just like praying mantis skins laying on the ground and I couldn't see one of them. I was like, oh no, they ate each other, but they didn't. <laughs> Don't worry, they're both here. Uh, so that was really cool. And yeah, they're really fun, really cute. They like dance around. You can see this one's dancing around. From what I read online, they do that because they're pretending to be little leaves, like swaying in the wind. Oh, it's so cute. They're little dancers. Just crawling all over. I love them a lot. They're so fun. Look at him. And by him, I mean her. And initially I was going to have them live in my bio orb, but I went to the pet store to get them some food and I was like, you know what? They're kind of small to be living in the bio orb. I take plants in and out of there all the time because you know how I am switching up plants constantly. I got them their own little aquarium. I got them their own little tank and we're gonna set that up today, right now. Can you even see them? Dirty Dan, Pinhead Larry, and they're both, both females. I didn't even say they're ghost mantises. Let's go set up their tank. Okay, this is the tank I'm going to be putting them in. This is the Zilla 5.5 gallon critter cage for my little critters, my little aliens. Yeah, I think this will be a good one. So the lid goes like this. It has like a mesh top. I'll link everything I'm talking about in the video down in the description. If I don't know, for some odd reason, you're looking for a praying mantis cage set up. This is what I'm doing for mine. So it's like a mesh top and you just like slide it in like this. And then you can slide it out. Maybe this isn't waterproof. So if you're looking for something waterproof, this is not going to be it. <laughs> okay, so first I have these Lekka balls. These are from Brockton. New York, I think is what it is, Brockton NY something. Again, I'll have them linked. These are just black Lekka balls. And I'm going to put them at the bottom of the tank, just like a little thin layer of them. Basically, this is just to help the plants grow. And on top of the LECA, I'm going to start adding plants. So this is a type of variegated hibiscus. I've just had this rooting in, it's a cutting. I just have had this rooting in sphagnum moss in my terrarium in my bedroom. And I am gonna go ahead and insert it, insert it, and put it on top of the LECA balls. Black day. You know what? I actually decided to cut the hibiscus in half so that it wasn't as tall. I didn't like how it was like leaning across the entire thing. I think this will be better in the long run. Um, it'll just look nicer and fill out the space nicer. So yeah, that's what we're doing. And I'm putting the begonia back here in this corner. I think that'll look really nice. So oh, now I just have this um, pre-moistened cocoa coir. This was a cocoa coir brick. And I'm just gonna add a layer of this, just like another thin layer. Cause we also have a layer of sphagnum to go on top of it. So not too much. Just to help keep the humidity up a little bit and to hold the plants in place. Just like that much. You see, you see? Yeah. And now I'm gonna add some sphagnum moss, of course. Actually, I'm gonna add this first, I think. Um, these are little driftwood pieces. I got two of them. I'm gonna go ahead and add them in. I'm not exactly sure how yet. Well, maybe like this. That looks good. Plop them in there. 
like so. Yeah, that looks good, right? Yeah, like that. And now I'm gonna add a little bit of sphagnum on top, again, for humidity purposes. This is my first like thing I'm doing for this, so let me know if you have any advice or um, anything like that. I would appreciate it. But just according to things I'm reading online, this should suffice for the praying mantises. And I'm gonna add a little bit more of the sphag where the plants are. Um, just so it's a little bit thicker where they are. Help hold them in place. According to what I read online, you don't have to give them this much uh, space. Again, this is a 5.5 gallon tank. From what I've read, it just has to be three times as high as an adult praying mantis and two times as wide. But I wanted to give them like very, very adequate space. So I got them the 5.5 gallon tank. Personally, I would just rather have them in a little bit larger of a space rather than too small. I don't even want to risk it. So yeah, I went with the 5.5 gallon and I will be keeping two of them in here. Again, I'm not like an expert. I've just been reading up on them a lot the last few weeks since I found out that my friend would be giving me a couple of these. But uh, this kind of... Uh, praying mantis are communal again they're ghost mantises so as long as they're well fed they won't eat on feed on each other again that's just what i've been reading online correct me if i'm wrong but i'm pretty sure i've read a lot of stuff on them so yeah i'll be keeping them both in here okay and i decided i only have two plants in there right now i decided it needed a little bit more so i took these raffidophora hong kongensis cuttings from my bi orb and I'm gonna put them in there as well. This is a trailer climber. It'll kind of go wherever you want it to. And I think it's a good one. It stays like relatively like flat. I think it'll be a good one to climb around, especially in the front here and like up on the wood and stuff. So yeah, that's why I chose this one. You just kind of lay it in like that and it'll start to grow wherever you really want it to. Cut this into two pieces. Spread it out a little bit more like that right okay maybe i'm going to put a maranta for a little bit of height this is a variegated maranta luco mira um this cutting actually has some roots now again just took a cutting stuck it in water i think i'm gonna put it back here the back lip. this is a hoya pubicalyx pub pubicalyx i think has some roots there i'm gonna put it in here as well might as well, we're here, why not? And I'm just gonna put it, I think, right here. Let it do whatever it wants. I don't really care. <laughs> it's kind of an awkward cutting, but you know what? It is when it is. Actually break off its sleeve. Cute. Cool. Yeah. There's our new tank. They're so cool. Okay, I'm just gonna show you. This is totally random. Well, not random, random, but like last night, each of them bolted. Okay, so here's one. That's so cool, right? But yeah, um, yeah, that's its skin. <laughs> and then it was bigger the next day. This is what I'm gonna be feeding them while they're little. It's like this little jar with this weird stuff in it that has fruit flies, but they're flightless, so they can't fly around. I don't even know if you can see any of them. Oh yeah, you can see some crawling around in there, and then the rest of them will hatch over time, so they have food. <laughs> For sure, they're aliens. <laughs> so yeah, um, yeah, I'm convinced. They're too smart to just be bugs. They're so smart. All right, so that was me setting up their cage and they've been living there for, like I said, about a week now and they seem to like it. Plenty of space to roam around, do their thing. They're very active and jump around a lot, so it's fun. So this is their cage. The top is mesh and it just like slides out um, and they do like to hang out on the top. So I just make, I like go down here and I look at the top to make sure they're not like sitting somewhere. They'd get crushed if I open it. 
Just right next to it, I have a Philips Agro Bulb. It's like a warm, um, obviously like plant light and they seem to really like it. They hang out over here a lot of the time. So I think they like to stay pretty warm. Like it's not like too hot, but it's definitely warm right here. So they like to hang out there. I also put in some crystals. So there's like rose quartz, citrine. Um, yeah, just a whole bunch of stuff in there. Nothing that'll like dissolve or leach the minerals or whatever that can kill the bugs or the plants. All right, so here is their little food thing. So I just have it partially open, but it's kind of gross. There's little fruit fly maggots and egg sac things in there. Um, I think they're actually called fruit fly spikes. But yeah, as they get bigger, they just come out of their little thingy. I have it partially open so that some of them can get out, but it takes some work to get out. So there's not too many out at one time. Um, so yeah, I just have that sitting in there. Ew, you can see the little things crawling around. I'm so sorry if that grosses you out. But um, I have these little, like, I think these were called ficus roots. I have two of them, one there, one there for them to climb around on. They don't like it that much, but they just climb around on the top like that. They don't really like the decorations and stuff. So, oh well. All right, and then as far as plants go, I have a hibis variegated hibiscus back there, as long as a Maranta leuconura, leuconura. And then here I have a variegated leuconura. There we have a begonia soli mutata. There's a few pieces of Raphidophora hongkongensis, um, a Hoya pubicalix, begonia amphioxus, um, rooted cutting. Ah, right behind the fruit fly thing, we have a begonia cleopatrae. That's my favorite begonia, so yeah. This is their little cage. So nice. And I also forgot to mention that as far as water, I just use my Biorb water and I just spray through the top. I already did it, but I'll just spray through the mesh so that the water kind of drips down like how like rain would. I don't even know if you can see that. Um, because, I mean, obviously they need to drink water and I just spray it above where the plants are so that um, they can drink the water little beadlets off the leaf. So yeah, that's what I do. Okay, if you have any mantis tips, leave them down below. Any feedback, questions, anything like that, leave a comment as well. That is it for this video. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next one.